Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today uh, for the Oxford MBA Africa Alliance student webinar. Um, as you can see on the screen in front of you, I'm joined by a multitude of different students from different backgrounds, different countries across the African continent. And we're really excited to share more on both their experiences um, and how to help prepare you on this journey into the Oxford MBA program. Uh, so my name is Tammy. I am the chair of the Oxford Africa Business Alliance. Um, I am joined today um, by my uh, co-directors of outreach for the Africa Alliance, both Cheeto and Zama, who can introduce themselves a little bit more. Um, the Africa Alliance is a formal partnership between both uh, students, faculty, staff and alumni across the business school and was really created to formalize and strengthen our Africa initiative. So to Briefly summarize the Africa Initiative at the Business School. Um, it is where we have made a pledge to have at least 10% of our class coming from Africa. And um, it is something that we are very proud that we have actually achieved over the last five years. Uh, we currently in this class have 12% of our students from the continent with 10 different African nationalities represented and 58% of all our students are women, uh, African students, sorry, are women. Um, so this session is really designed uh, for the students to, as I said, to share their insights, share their experiences. Uh, we will have some time, hopefully at the end, where you'll be able to send through any questions that you may have. So I ask that you please use the uh, Q&A function and not the chat function, and we will hope to get to those questions at the end. If not, um, our team within the Admissions and Recruitment Office will definitely be able to answer those questions for you. So with that, I would like to hand over now uh, to both Zama and Chida, who will be able to lead this Q&A session. Um, and we hope you enjoy it. So over to you, Zama. Thank you. Thank you, Tammy. Um, greetings, everybody. My name is Zama Nguizwane, and I'm from South Africa, Johannesburg. Um, in terms of my background and work experience, I've been in the mining industry as a geologist for five years. And before coming to, to do my MBA, I've been in management consulting. So the plans post MBA is to continue pursuing uh, my career in management consulting. Hello everyone, my name is Chidochi Gwedere. I am from Harare, Zimbabwe. Um, prior to coming to Oxford, I was working with the Clinton Health Access Initiative um, and supporting the government in, of Zimbabwe with their HIV and TB programming. Um, and then later I was an advisor to the government's COVID-19 response arm. Um, uh, after I finished my MBA, I hope to stay in the UK for a couple of years and um, continue in, in the impact consulting space and then hopefully gain um, enough experience and enough resources to invest in and then move back to Zimbabwe. So um, we will introduce our panelists now and we will start with David. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Dave. I am from Kenya. I was in finance at Centum pre-MBA uh, post MBA, I will be looking to expand a business I co-founded, an advisory business I co-founded uh, prior to the MBA outside Kenya, right? So across the East African region. So that's what I want to do after the MBA. Thanks, Dave. Um, we'll have Lily next. Hi, everyone. I'm Lily. I'm from Windsor, Namibia. And uh, pre-MBA, I was working in the investment management sphere in, in Luxembourg. And uh, post-MBA, I hope to pivot into um, alternative investments um, with a focus on Africa. Thank you, Lili. Um, Ink is next. Hello, everyone. My name is Inke Chi or Ink Balogu. I am from Nigeria. I was born I grew up in Lagos and I still live here. Um, I started off my career in tech marketing and then in media. And now I'm an entrepreneur and I'm really excited to stay in the continent after my Oxford MBA. Thanks, Ink. Sai. Hi everyone, I'm Sai and I'm from South Africa. Um, post graduating as an engineer, I worked as a consultant um, and most recently before the MBA, briefly con completed a stint um, in the healthcare industry in a strategy role. Post the MBA, I'll be returning back into consulting and in the long term, I hope to focus on my passion, energy and sustainability. Thank you, Sai. Sam is next. Hi everyone, my name is Sam Wabusa and I'm from Nigeria. Um, prior to the MBA, I was 
in a role in the Treasury and Global Markets team of the bank in Nigeria. And I also uh, had a stint in project and structured finance. And then post MBA, I'm actually looking to explore opportunities with um, development finance institutions and then do some work around impact. Thank you, Samuel. And last, Mumbai. Hi, everyone. My name is Vimbai Chakonda, and I'm from Zimbabwe. I'm a qualified chartered accountant, and I've previously been working for KPMG and then uh, Bupa here in the UK. I'm also a, an entrepreneur, and I've um, co-founded two businesses in Zimbabwe. So post-MBA, I'm really looking forward to expanding those businesses um, and also just um, gaining some experience in strategy as well. Perfect, thank you. So I'll hand you over to Zama to get um, our questions and answers going. Thank you, Chido. Um, so we'll kick off with our questions to our amazing panelists. Hopefully you guys get some incredible insights from what they have to tell you. Um, we'd like to actually first focus on the business school and its focus on Africa. And I'd like to get some insights from Lily and Inc. Um, so I'd like to find out how large is the Africa representation and what impact does it have on the class and on the program? Well, thank you, Zama, for the question. Um, we have about 13% uh, um, of the cohorts coming from Africa. And of that, um, like Tammy said, uh, about 58% of that are African women. So uh, definitely a very diverse uh, cohort, um, especially for an MBA um, outside of Africa. Um, with that being said, I think that it's such an amazing um, opportunity for not only the African members of the cohorts, but also um, other cohorts to learn and exchange from each other. Um, from my experience, um, a lot of people have never been to or heard of Namibia. So I um, am the opportunity um, to sort of um, change their view and <laughs> on um, what is what is Africa, what is Namibia, um, what type of opportunities are there. Um, and I think that um, they really, a lot of people really appreciate this sort of um, cultural exchange. And I think that's something that's uh, very unique um, to the Oxford MBA. Thank you, Lily. Um, I particularly like how you are planning to change people's views and we're very happy to have you here from Namibia. I'll hand over to Ink to answer the same question. Thank you. So the MBA class is pretty small, it's pretty intimate, about 320 students. And compared to my undergraduate class, for example, which was about 1200 students, in my undergraduate class, less than 10 people, like 10 physical bodies were from Africa. So <laughs> it's a huge difference that for uh, such a small class, we're over 10% and we have been for the past five years. So this means that we learn from each other both formally and informally. Um, you know, we talk about, we exchange ideas on where to buy things in and around Oxford. And then in the classroom, as Lily mentioned, um, it's not the danger of a single story like Chimamanda pointed out in that point in tech talk you can have other people from Africa also give the class educated perspectives on what it's like to be from the continent and operate business in the continent so it is um, a great learning experience both personally and in the classroom thank you Inc that is very insightful um, my next question I will target it back to Tammy um, as well as Sai and Vimbai um, how Africa focused is Said Business School and Oxford? I'll start with Tammy to just uh, give some insights on that. Yeah. Great. Um, I think what's really important to note is that our Africa initiative has moved beyond the 10% the aim. That yes, that that is a critical component of it, but we also recognize that we don't want to be an institution that takes amazing talent away from the continent and doesn't support the opportunities to return. So we also have embedded Africa-focused curriculum within the MBA program. Uh, so we have an international elective, for example, that focuses on growth prospects and opportunities for business in Africa, where uh, about 60 students will go and travel out to Africa and be able to look at those opportunities that we've been discussing, how to identify 
identify the opportunities, but also navigate some of the challenges that do exist on the continent. Um, we have some other local uh, electors. When I say local, I mean in Oxford. So we do another elective focused on doing business in Africa. Um, and again, it focuses on some of the nuances. Uh, we'll take deep dives into specific countries, different markets. Um, and it's really interesting, as Inc has already mentioned, to have both non-African students and African students part of those electives. Um, we also have something called our Oxford Africa Business Forum, which is a great way to bring thought leaders from both across the, the continent, but across the Oxford community to come to together and really focus on some of those, those opportunities, but also really how can you access those opportunities through some of the networks that we are trying to create. Um, so we aim to have about 80% of all our African students returning to Africa. That is our main aim every year. But as even Chido mentioned, if you're wanting to get some international experience and exposure, that's absolutely fine because we also work with our alumni network that's part of the diaspora that may be perhaps three or five years post MBA are then looking to return. So we do work very closely with our, our alumni network as well. Thank you, Tammy. That's very helpful. I just want to also get uh, perspective from our students. Um, Sai, how would you start answering this question? Yeah, so I think that a major influence on my decision to apply to Oxford has been the sincerity of Oxford's African focus. So I remember back um, at one of these events in 2019 when Oxford, actually Tammy, um, held an event in Johannesburg for prospective candidates. Um, and they spoke about the, you know, Oxford's focus on Africa. And I remember thinking to myself, yeah, like all of these MBAs just love to talk or punt Africa. Um, you know, Africa is a place for growth and, you know, Africa is where all the talent is going to come from. Um, and, and, and then, but then I saw the stats um, that Oxford has the highest percentage of Africans amongst all of the top international MBA programs. Um, and that this percentage has been growing over time that the Dean personally sponsors an African student every year. And now even, you know, being part of the Alliance, you know, I feel the support and, and the network. Um, and, and that's when I realized that the intent, uh, their actions and their delivery all speak to each other. Um, and that they're actually very, very serious about their commitment to Africa. And that made a meaningful difference for me and on my decision to apply to Oxford. Thank you, Sai. Um, yeah, so I think similar to, to Sai, sort of my decision was, you know, I want to be in a diverse um, cohort, but I also want to be able to, you know, to, to talk about, you know, where I come from as an African, you know, together with, and to have everybody else experience that. So it's one thing to be the only African and talking about Africa, but it's another to actually have an elective where people get to go to Africa and experience it. And I can safely say that, you know, a lot of my um, colleagues who've never been to Africa are really looking forward to, to that elective. Um, so it's really is not all talk. I think even just, you know, right now we're looking at um, a go-to project, which is our global um, opportunity and threats um, Oxford project. So it's really looking at solving, you know, the world's, world's problems and a lot of the teams, you know, there's some teams who don't even have, you know, an African in their team, but are actually doing a project in Africa. So I think, you know, there's really a focus on just, you know, Africa in general, which I really love and I honestly think that a lot of the teams are actually doing a project on trying to solve a problem in Africa, which, which is great. Thank you, Vimbai. I can definitely echo your sentiments there. Um, so now I want to switch over to admissions, which I'm sure most of you guys are here to hear about. And so we just want to get some advice and tips and guides from the panel here. And uh, with my first question directed to Sam, Lily and Chido, what do you feel are some of the biggest challenges or barriers to Africans applying for the MBA? Chido, right. oh, Sam, sorry. Go ahead, Sam. Yeah, yeah so um, one major challenge would be the feeling that they, are, um, they haven't achieved enough. There's this um, feeling of inadequacy. So they think that, you know, compared to the counterparts on the cohorts, you know, whilst doing their research about the program, 
there are certain profiles that tend to come up most times. You know, you have to be probably in management consulting, you have to be in finance, you have to be in tech. And, you know, if you don't have any of these or you don't work in any of these sectors or industry, there's this feeling of in inadequacy that you haven't achieved enough. And then maybe you shouldn't actually be applying, you know, for the program at Oxford. Another major challenge I would also see is with respect to the appli application, you would actually need to get a reference letter. And in most cases, um, we get reference letters that are pretty, pretty much like templates. So um, the, the referee just basically changes the name of the applicant and then there's a template that says, oh, I know X, Y, Z person and blah, blah, blah. He, he or she is of good character. But beyond that, you know, the reference letter has to communicate something about you that, you know, distinguishes you from all the other applicants on the program. Um, a third point will be the application fees. I know in most cases when people are considering MBAs, they might look at one, two, three schools. And for each of those applications, you have to pay between maybe 150 and $200. So considering all of the application fees, you know, it might serve as a deterrent for them to apply um, for the Oxford MBA. Thank you, Sam. Um, Lily? Yes, um, I echo Samuel's points. Um, I think for me personally, my biggest challenge is probably the GMATs. Um, I think it's actually very important to understand that the GMAT has such a huge time um, component to it. Um, and I think it's also very expensive, um, not only uh, the testing fees, but also um, the material. Um, and also, I think that because I'm not coming from a background of always uh, standardized testing, uh, that actually um, can reflect um, on a lower score, not necessarily because you are not as smart um, as other people, but just because you are not um, used to standardized testing. Um, also, um, another key thing I think that uh, applicants should look at is um, as soon as you start um, to think about an MBA, um, start thinking about um, what type of uh, tests are you going to take? Because I think that's um, such a, a large portion um, of your application. Although um, at the MBA here at Oxford, um, they take a holistic view of your application. So uh, still apply, even if your GMAT score isn't uh, 720. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you, Lily. Um, Cheeto, what would you say? Yeah, thanks for that. Um, so to, to echo Lily, Lily's point, I think um, we're very hard on ourselves as Africans and you think it's Oxford, so I must have 720 and my application must be this, this thing, right, for me to get in or to, have a, um, to get a scholarship. And sometimes we disqualify ourselves, like Sam said, because we're not good enough. Um, and uh, I've been talking to a lot of people and just saying, just submit your application, right? Really and truly. Um, some of it is just really, really mental. Just finish your application and apply. Um, so the second thing is talking about then the completeness of your application. So some people might not get into Oxford, not because they're not good enough, but because there's certain parts of the application that are incomplete. So even though we ask um, if you like some some parts of the application that are like, would you like to tell us about this thing? We know, like our our um, application was like, is there more that you would like to tell us? Some people didn't get in not because they weren't good applicants, but but because to that like question they answered no, thank you, and so you're <laughs> no thanks, I'm good. So it's 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 that your application then is considered incomplete. So even if you're good, we can't then consider, like Oxford can't then consider your application and you can't move forward. Um, so that's one. And the other thing is sometimes I feel like there's not a strong um, MBA culture in some of our home countries to support the way these applications, um, some of the things the application requires, for example, with references. Um, sometimes you're not in a position to tell your boss, right? that you or your manager that you're trying to leave the company to go to an MBA and on top of leaving please may you write me this reference letter so that I can leave <laughs> so um, it's finding good references and I think my um, advice on that is to look at companies that you worked um, worked in before or for me I had a mentor of mine who's sort of been um, watching my career progression from after high school to to where, where I am now um, and 
giving um having her give me a character reference because it's more important um then that the person has a good understanding of your personality and of your strengths and of your weaknesses so that they can really write sort of a a genuine sort of heartfelt reference so that we have an understanding of you outside of yourself um, and then just another thing on Lily's point, I think the last thing is just location. Um, so when we think about testing for GMAT, um, there are only 14 GMAT testing centers, right, in all of Africa, and none of them are in Francophone countries. So we don't have um, a really large sort of Francophone representation on the cohort, and that's something we have to um, work on. I had to fly um, to Johannesburg to write my GMAT because um, my testing center was closed at the time that I needed to test. Um, and so just thinking about that, if you think about all the little roadblocks um, beforehand, um, it'll give you enough time to sort of create a strategy for how to overcome each one, because it's really important that your application is complete if you want to get in. Thank you so much, uh, Sam, Lily, and Cheeto for just very practical pieces of advice. And I think what definitely stands out from what I'm hearing is do not disqualify yourself. So I'm really happy to hear that. Um, so now we'll just ask questions around funding. Um, I'll first ask Tammy and then uh, turn it to Vimbai and Dave. Um, how does one go about funding for uh, the Oxford MBA? And could you touch upon the different funding options? Absolutely. Uh, we obviously recognize that funding is most probably one of the most significant barriers to even considering an MBA program. Simply the application fee can often disqualify you from your, your financial circumstances point of view. So um, we do recognize that we as an institution, if we wanted to commit to this 10%, we needed to do more than just be on the ground and, and increase accessibility to people applying. Um, so on average, about 60 to 65% of all our African students receive a scholarship or bursary from the business school itself. So we have made a significant pledge and contribution to this. If you were to go and compare that to many other business schools across the world, I, I don't think that they'd be able to provide those same numbers. Um, as we've already referenced, the Dean and his wife actually personally fund the Dean's Africa Scholar every year to really reinforce that commitment. Um, we have a number of different scholarships. They range in partial to full. What I can say about the scholarships is one, there are many, but also you will never know if you are going to get a scholarship until you have applied and until you have received an offer. So asking us at this point, will I get a scholarship or do I qualify for a scholarship or what are my chances of getting a scholarship? It's very difficult to assess because you are assessed both in your own individual application, but also against the peers that you are applying with. So although you might have a really great application, there are many people with really great applications. Um, so don't let funding be the barrier to applying in the first place. That's my, my first sort of piece of advice. But then the second piece when it comes to scholarships is do your research. There is a long list of scholarships on our website. The university has a scholarship tool where you can go and input your nationality or location and the program that you're interested in will tell you what scholarships you qualify for. Um, there are some other scholarships like the Shivening Fund Scholarship, for example, which is a non-university scholarship, but it's part of the UK government scholarship scheme that is available. So do your research, but don't spend all your time focused on just the scholarship part of the application, because in order to get the scholarship in the first place, you need to have an offer. So make sure that you prioritize that. Um, and then uh, obviously the scholarship components is critical. Um, and then in, just in terms of seeing the funding as both an opportunity, but also as an investment. You have to see this as an investment in yourself and in your future. There is going to be some financial implications. There are loan schemes and loan providers, which again, you can go through our website, you'll see some of the loan providers that do offer uh, additional sort of opportunities to access funding. Um, but those scholarships are, like I said, partial or full, and uh, it will be dependent on your application. Finally, and last point is what do we look for when we are awarding these scholarships? Some of them are based on nationality. For example, we have the Oxford Adara Foundation Scholarship, which is exclusively for women uh, with a preference for Nigeria. But 
there are scholarships that are based on either gender or location. Um, and generally, we are looking for people that are really strong ambassadors for the region, that have a strong commitment to the continent um, and are hopefully looking to have that kind of impact for many years to come post MBA. Um, so I hope that helps in sort of setting the scene for you, but do not count yourself out simply because you are concerned about funding. Trust the process. I'm sure many of the students that have received scholarships on reflection now say like, I'm so glad I just trusted the process and, and then received the funding after that. Thank you, Tammy. That is very helpful. Uh, so Vumbai, could you also talk more on funding? Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I'll just touch on sort of my experience as well. I mean, I applied quite late in the process. So I, you know, really didn't think I would, you know, get a scholarship because I think every time, you know, you know, I think it is, it's not really a first come first serve, but you know, it's the earlier you do it, the better your chances. Um, so, I mean, I had looked into sort of other ways of funding. So like, you know, different financing opportunities, like with Lendwise, Progedy, like, you know, there's so many different ones that you can look at, which, you know, are willing to finance. Um, but I think luckily I did get a partial scholarship. Um, so I managed to to get a scholarship from Oxford and then and then use uh, my savings as well to to fund that. I think it's I mean, it is it is a huge investment. It's 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 a lot of money, um, but I think for me, you know, I mean, when I think about it and I think, oh wow, this is how much I've spent. It's a lot of money. But when I actually also think about how much I'm gaining and how much you know you know the value that I'm getting, I definitely think it's it's an investment in myself. Um, I mean, I last, you know, did school, you know, eight, 10 years ago. Um, and, you know, while the school, the, the skills were valuable at finance, um, there's so many certain things where you start to realize in business that you're lacking certain skills and the MBA really just, you know, covers all of that. And for me, it was a lot of like the entrepreneurship skills, you know, and a lot of the strategy skills as well. So I've taken up a lot of strategy courses and also just the networks that you meet as well. So I think it really is investing in in who you are and thinking about it, like Tammy said, really thinking about it as an investment. Thank you, Vimbai. And Dave? I couldn't agree more with um, Tammy and, and V. And the way to think about it is, worst case scenario, you don't get any kind of scholarship. Um, from my experience, the investment is worth it the amount you would spend to get that MBA will absolutely open up your world. And especially if, say, your undergraduate was in Africa. It's a completely different world. I remember before I left the country, I had a chat with another Oxford alumnus, and he said to me, "What you, the, the, the place you're joining the world that's now being opened up to you is unlike anything that you can imagine now. So when you're sitting at your desk and you're doing the math and you're thinking about the, the sticker fee and you're saying to yourself, this might be too much, it actually isn't. At the end of it, the value that you will have received and that you will continue to receive throughout your life, because when you do this program, you're an Oxford graduate and that'll never change. The impact to you, to your brand, to your career is immense. So it certainly is worth it, no matter whether, you know, no matter, um, whether you get a scholarship or not, you absolutely should do it. That said, do your research. There are a lot of um, programs to support students to get such life-changing experiences because think about all the people who've been through the program. When they get out of it, they say to themselves, how can I give back? How can I make sure that someone isn't in Africa unable to experience this amazing thing simply because of funding? So do take advantage of those opportunities. Thank you so much, Dave. So it's all about value from what I can tell. And just the final question um, around admissions, which I think is, is, is also important in its own right. How do you make your application stand out? I will direct this to Cheeto and I'll also have a stab at this one. Okay, so I think the, the biggest thing for me was D. Um, so before I sat down to write any of the applications that I wrote, I was very clear on who I was, what I cared about, why I care about it, and what I plan to do because I care about it. And making sure that my narrative 
for my application made sense and that every piece because there's there's so much that you um write so you write your personal statement and then there's little bits about your career and what you were doing in the past and the barriers that you faced and, and everything else you need to make sure ultimately out of the many many essays that you're going to write that your narrative lines up um because i think again if if it's if it's not making sense or if there's discrepancies um or if there's evidence that you haven't done your research in a particular area that you're speaking of or it's ungrounded or, or it's unfounded um that is ultimately what weakens your your application so just make sure um that you are clear um and i'll shoot it back to you Zama. thank you cheeto i think um to touch back on the strong narrative i think i'll also echo the fact that you need to have a strong correlation throughout your essays and since this mba that we're talking about is a one year program um having career plans and putting it out there in your application making sure that the university sees that you have a plan and it it should translate in your application. So whatever you're trying to do in terms of your post uh, MBA aspiration, it's reflecting and it's translating so that you can tell because you don't want to say in one portion of the essay that you want to be in management consulting and the other you want to start a business and the other you're trying to do uh, entrepreneur, whatever. So it needs to be um, it needs to be strong and needs to translate. And also, um, as the other panelists have mentioned, uh, um, do not underestimate the GMAT. Uh, just take time. It, it, as we said, it doesn't reflect on your intelligence. It's not a measure of that. But if you invest the time uh, to prepare, I think it's also going to have a strong impact as well. And yeah, those are my key tips for a strong application. Would you mind if I sort of just chimed in just to, as I've been listening to you all, I'm, I'm looking at all your faces and I'm, it's, I'm really reflecting on the fact that the value of the MBA program is yourselves. When you sit in here and you share your experiences, it's, it's how you are learning from each other. And, and for us on the other side of that, when we're you know, first meeting you and you're going through the admissions process, that is what we're trying to assess. We're constantly looking and assessing candidates based on if I was sitting in the classroom with these students that are with us today, would I want them sitting next to me? Would I be learning from them? Would they, are they able to communicate their insights and their dreams and the things that they're passionate about in in a way that irrespective of if I'm a finance professional, so Dave is, is clearly very smart when it comes to numbers, perhaps I'm not, and am I learning from him? Is he able to share that with me in a way that benefits both me as well as benefits him? So that is how we from the admissions committee side really assess you that through your communication style and your leadership style and how you work through that application and then ultimately in an interview is do I walk away from the interview better for it? And will the class be better for it by having you um, with them? And I think that's how we try and assess. And that's how I hope the students, when you walk away from the MBA program, for as much as you will love the faculty and some of the staff, hopefully, it's essentially the relationships that you have formed within the class that is the most valuable to you and continue to be the most valuable to you. So make sure that really shines through. It's less about what Oxford can do for you and more around what you can do for the people within your class. Um, and, and that should help your application shine a bit more. Thanks so much, Tammy. Um, and that's a good segue um, to move from sort of admissions to um, life in Oxford and a little bit more about the Oxford experience. Um, so Lily, Sidehill and Vambai, I think the one thing that we have in common is we applied to multiple business schools. Um, what separated, I think, the Oxford MBA from the other programs that you were exploring and applied to? Um, we'll start with Lily. Um, yes, so I think that there are so many uh, great business schools out there, um, but I think that you need to do your research. Um, so for me, um, one thing that was uh, very important to me was uh, being able to pivot back, uh, pivot to Africa um, in the investment space. Um, and with that being said, I wanted to be in a classroom where I was able to network uh, with um, a lot of African students um, in um, a business school that supports um, 
investing in Africa. Um, so for me, that was one of the key um, points um, when I was looking at um, which business school uh, to attend. I was also uh, very lucky that I attended um, one of the interview days um, and that's where I met Cheeto. And I think um, sort of attending um, interview days, whether online or in person and trying to get a feel of uh, the school and uh, lectures, I think it's a great um, sort of interview, not just for yourself, but um, for them as well, for you to understand, is this something for me? Because I think if you do not know yourself and why you're doing the MBA, um, you can go to any program. Um, but if you know what you are coming to the MBA for, um, I think that that is the most important. Um, always know who you are, try and understand why you're doing it and join um, a program that fits that narrative. Thanks so much, Sully. Um, so I will shoot the, the next question to you. Yeah, I, I think just adding on to what Lily said and actually what Tammy just said as well. Um, for, for, for me, there were three reasons uh, or three things that separated Oxford. Uh, firstly, it was, it was the diverse class, the truly diverse class with broad perspectives um, that enabled a holistic experience, right? So a major reason to participate in the MBA was to broaden my own thinking and gain different perspectives and interacting with the like-minded but different people and forming a global support network was equally as important to me as the course of the learnings itself. And I think with over 60 nationalities represented, the Oxford MBA offered an amazing opportunity to do that. The secondly was um, the values and the focus that resonated with me. I believe that Oxford has a genuine focus on social impact and responsible business leadership. And thirdly, I mean, quite honestly, it was the brand or the, the brand as a platform to enable opportunities and growth. Uh, I, I, so I did apply to other schools and some of those schools were actually higher rated you know, than Oxford. Um, and when I spoke to people, when I spoke to other like executives, like they, you know, often I found myself trying to explain what the school was or trying to justify why the school is, is you know, so highly ranked. And I felt with Oxford, I never had to do that, right? I just had to say Oxford and everyone knew what, what that was. So I think that the brand and the network is undoubtedly very strong. Um, and that definitely makes a difference and provides a lot of credibility. Thanks. I think the one thing I'm getting from both Lily and Sai is um, the one thing that separated the Oxford MBA is not only that they said they wanted diversity, but they were pursuing it, not only in recruitment, but then making sure that there were places to foster diverse um, insights and places to support you as Africans once you got um, on campus. I think something that Inc was, was talking about was that there were 10 people and they, they were just sort of around. <laughs> um, so that's, I think, a really important insight from both of you. Um, I will give it to Rambai to, to give her perspective on that as well. Uh, yeah, thanks. Um, I think for me, it was, I mean, a lot of reasons, um, some of them more practical than others. Um, on a practical sort of level, I was already living in the UK. So I kind of focused my search on sort of the top MBA programs in the UK. Um, and also the other thing was the opportunity cost as well. So a lot of you know, the MBAs are longer than one year. So I, you know, love the fact that, you know, Oxford was just a one year program. So, you know, I could get in and get out and get back into, you know, the job market, ETC. So that was, that was something that stood out for me. Um, and then the other one was just the, you know, the Pat Oxford sort of drive and passion for impact. Um, I think that for me was, you know, probably the biggest one. Um, you know, Oxford, you know, really does, look at wanting to really solve the world's global problems. Having grown up in Zimbabwe, where there's certain things that there's so, so many broken systems and things that we just accept. Like I'd never actually had to question why my grandfather's um, village has no electricity. It was just, you know, there's no electricity. Like I'd never questioned it. Um, but, you know, so just being around so many like-minded people and I realized that because Oxford was all about passion, impact and wanting to solve some of these problems, um, like Tammy said, it's about the people who you're surrounded with. And I wanted to be surrounded by people who are thinking about that and wanting to drive and change some of these problems. Because at the end of the days, we are the future leaders and what we do and 
how we think is going to change our world. So yeah. That's perfect. Thank you so much, Mumbai. I'm mean, just thinking about um, the world and our place in it. Inc, I know you did your undergraduate in the undergraduate degree in the United States. Um, and Dave, you were talking about um, the difference between doing your um, degree locally versus internationally. Um, so Inc, you first and then Dave, why do an international um, MBA versus a local MBA? For me, Oxford is really the best of both worlds because, for example, I had never met any Nigerian that I now know through the program. And as Tammy said, this is just not in words. Like I would say three people in this call, I did review sessions with them because before the MBA, I had never made a regression model. I had never done statistics. And now I'm proud to say that I got a distinction in my analytics course. And that's because these people, you know, made out time in their busy schedules to have like a one hour review session with me. Um, so in this Corona time where, you know, where we're sometimes we go to class physically, sometimes we're not together. It's very important that you have a, a network of people that speak your own language, you know. Um, so I am very grateful. It's not just diversity in words, it's diversity in terms of, you know, the different groups that we're in, um, you know, the different types of people, the different industries, the different backgrounds. So it's definitely not a monolithic experience. Um, it's very textured and very rich, and I'm very proud to be in like the Oxford family and the Oxford Africa family as well. And we are proud to have you. <laughs> I'll shoot um, the same question to Dave. And for me, it was perspective. Uh, one of the biggest um, takeaways from an MBA is how you think. And when you do a local MBA, not deliberately, but as a function that all of you have similar backgrounds, you tend to think the same, which isn't a bad thing. But when you're on an international MBA, because you're drawn from so many different backgrounds, have experienced so many different things, how you think by the time you get out is dramatically different and you become a global citizen. You can appreciate where others are coming from because they have different lived experiences from you. And so when you do an international program, that's what you take away and that's why you should do an international program. Thanks, Dave, and I'll, I'll stay on you for a bit. If So what are the two core themes um, or areas that you think the business school um, focuses on to support that? And why, why is that important to you um, and expanding your horizons? Absolutely. So one of the things that Saeed does really well is not only address capitalism, which a business degree is meant to do, but look at it from a social angle because none of us exist in a vacuum. Everything we do interacts with other people, whether directly or indirectly. And therefore, to understand your place in the world, to understand what impact you can have is a very powerful thing. And it sort of segues into the second um, theme for me that was very special about the, the school, and it was the systems level thinking. And I'll break that down a bit. So typically, a management degree will focus on an organization because you're going to be a manager of an organization. However, even a company, again, does not exist in a vacuum. It exists within a system. And one of the things that you will do on an Oxford MBA is go to, which is Global Opportunities and Threats Oxford, where you get to think about systems level challenges. And it's great preparation, and especially, and especially relevant for us Africans, where a lot of our systems are still being developed, and we're likely going to be the people that make those changes and we won't be able, rather, it won't be enough to do them at a company level. We'd have to do them at a country, at a national level. And to do anything at a national level, it's a system level problem. And so this MBA will prepare you to think like that. Excellent. Thank you, Dave. Um, Sam, same question to you. What are the two core themes um, within the business school that stand out to you? OK, so at the risk of sounding repetitive, right? A major thing that stands out for me is what they just mentioned as well, uh, which is the, the focus on tackling world scale problems. And then I, I pretty much have the same example around, you know, the global opportunities and um, threats um, model. And it's just really around establishing the, the fact that there are 
wicked problems in the world. And then there are certain levels of inter um, relatedness. And we actually need to find a way of providing solutions to tackle this problem. So Oxford actually focuses on this, you know, says this and actually does this. There's always a way of tying in, you know, concern for uh, wicked problems or challenges being experienced around the world in every module, be it accounting, be it economics. There's just always a way of, you know, tying it back to addressing all of these world scale challenges. The second one for me would be around effective leadership and then conducting business in a responsible way. Now, the MBA makes us understand the fact that businesses, whilst they have their operations and then they're out there to make profits, in carrying out those activities, they have far reaching impacts, not just on people that consume the products or the services that they offer, but also the community. So there are a whole bunch of stakeholders that have to be considered when business decisions are actually being made. So that's another great theme and focus. And then lastly, will be around entrepreneurship. Post MBA, some of us might be looking to start up our own ventures. Actually, we've even started talking about, you know, starting up our own ventures. So there's um, a model on entrepreneurship projects, which some people are starting right now. And then they actually look to take that life post the MBA. So whether you are thinking of starting up your own business after the MBA, or you want to go back into paid employment, in your position in a paid um, employment, you could actually be an entrepreneur. Well, in this case, you call it an entrepreneur, you know, using all of the um, tools and all of the skills that you have actually learned and gained on the program, you know, to provide value and create an impact as well. Perfect, thank you. Um, Sam, I'm going to stay with you um, and shift the focus to the actual cohort itself. Um, so we talked about the diversity of, of Africa and the Africa program. Um, can you talk a little bit about the diversity of the class um, and what types of students um, come to Oxford, Saeed? Right, so uh, just to talk about the class again, um, we're over 320 students from about 67 um, different nationalities and then in terms of um, the uh, representation of Africa on the program just as Tammy mentioned earlier it's between 12 13 percent you know and that shows that there is a I think we've lost Sam. I think okay. While we try to get Sam back, um, want to oh, he's braving through it. But not just you know. All right, while well, we wait for Sam to come back, Lily, do you want to take on the same question? <laughs> yeah, thanks, Jido. Um, yes, I mean, we've spoken about uh, the numbers um, and the percentages, but I think truly it's a diverse class. Um, I have had, um, I think, over four different groups and such diverse groups. I think for me, that is so... Um, one of the key drivers to my learning experience because there is no other place or very few other places where I have the opportunity to work with uh, different students from such diverse backgrounds. Uh, everything from investment banking to like NGO, um, we have that. Um, and I think for me, uh, it's developing those soft skills um, that help me as a leader uh, and manage in such a global economy. I think for me, um, it's very diverse um, and not just diverse geography, but diversity of thinking as well. Like I have learned so much about how to tackle problems, how to think about cases. So I think like um, for the most part, a lot of my learning has been um, outside of the classroom. So I'm very grateful for um, the initiative that we have at Oxford here of having a diverse group of um, 
of students. And um, coming from a finance background, we all know in portfolio management, you need to diversify <laughs> risk return premium. So. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so as we think about the experience a little bit more, um, we know that we're sort of the first cohort to go through the entire year um, in a pandemic. And so I wanted to talk to Inka and Mumbai who, who have some experience with Oxford prior to this and ask what is different about this experience? Yeah, this, this has been so interesting. So I pretty much know maybe at least one alum in each of the maybe past three or four classes. Uh, and so, for example, I have a great friend called Victoria, and we first met like almost 10 years ago when we we're schooling in the United States together. And it's been it's been a little bit different for sure. So you have to be careful. You have to wear your mask in class. Um, you have to adapt to the fact that not everybody is in the class and you sometimes have to mute and talk and make people feel included if they're not in the classroom. Um, it also has kind of I think personally, it has made me make more friends because I think when you start a new program, you probably stick to the same click that you made on the first day or two. But with this one, I find that I'm constantly meeting new people in new breakout groups in class or in other activities where we just talk. So it has been really great. And I mean, knock on wood, I haven't gotten COVID. So, you know, you can still socialize with people. It's also been active. So I signed up to go on walks, some with people I know and some where the student council of the MBA kind of match makes you with someone. And it's dual function because you meet someone, actually like three functions, you meet someone, you explore Oxford and then you get to work out. So <laughs> what could be better than that? So if you, if you stay safe, if you follow the rules, you can still have a fun time, but you might have to put in more effort than you would for a normal year. Um, Vambai, same question. Yeah, well, um, so I sort of knew quite a lot about the Oxford MBA because my best friend did it about two years ago. So I remember coming over like during their launch and, um, you know, attending the Africa conference with her and even attending a class with her as well. So normally you have, you're put in, you know, there are about 300 people and you're put in classes of about 80. So normally you would have been in a class of 80, but what's happened with us with COVID is that our classes have been split into classes of 20 which obviously it's less people. So initially I'm like, oh, am I only gonna be exposed to 20 people? Oh, that's that's a bit annoying. But actually um, what, it, what it's meant for me is that I actually was able to build really good relationships with those 20 people. And the classes change each and rotate as well, like each um, term. So it's not just the same 20 people that you, you get to know. But also like, because it's 20 people, the lecturers actually know my name. <laughs> which is a bit intimidating but <laughs> but it's it's been it's been really good so I've enjoyed the smaller classes although initially I was like oh what is that going to mean um and and also the other thing is you realize that people are so innovative so you know we had a telegram group so even before we started school in September people knew we were going to be online and we had a telegram group people were already doing talks and I mean I met Lily online and I think before, when I joined here in September, I already knew about 80 people. Some people I still haven't probably met in person or I'm still meeting in person, but when I do meet them, I feel like I already know them because of that. So um, yeah, so I'd encourage everyone to get involved even on that Telegram group um, when you do get accepted, because it's a great way to start to build those relationships. Mm. Side hill, is there anything, um, any gap that you'd like to fill out when thinking about the day in the life of um, and what our days look like? Well, uh, I mean, I think that, you know, every day and every week is, is a little different, right? And there's always something going on from a social, sport, academic, um, interest, career activities. Um, and it's really up to you to tailor your path and your time. Um, I think a typical day would, would would include, you know, obviously classes, which which happens around three times a week now, um, but also a lot of group work um, with, with fellow team members, such as, you know, I think we mentioned GoTo, and then the entrepreneurship project that, that V and I are working on together. 
um, networking with the classmates, attending events on, on topics of interest. Uh, there's always something going on. Um, on a brighter note, you know, in less restrictive times, uh, the MBA cohort, often in the evenings, we'd meet informally at restaurants and pubs and also trying to get to know each other in, in, in the social environment. And uh, hopefully, you know, hopefully that'll start again soon. Perfect. Um, I think part of my social life is also influenced by the fact that I um, live in my college. So I have um, within my, my college, a family unit that I can socialize with. And um, I'm involved quite a bit with the, the MCR and sort of the music clubs here. Um, so I'm going to give it to Dave to give you an explanation of the collegiate system um, and what a college is. So once you get accepted into Oxford, you also get accepted into a college. What is that and what does that entail? So I'll start with the familiar. A college is at its core, a hall of residence. But it's so much more than that in the sense that it's an institution that brings together people from different disciplines that should also form part of your network. So when you think about what you're getting from Oxford, you're getting Saeed's uh, alumni base, and you'll have that with you. But you'll also get access to your college's alumni base. And you can and should reach out to your college to arrange those chats with people that you might otherwise not be in the same place with. So for example, I was speaking with someone who did law at my college, Kibo, and then went into Goldman Sachs. So we had a, an area of commonality in the sense that we were in the same uh, college. And those are the sorts of conversations that you'll be able to have as a function of being a member of a college. And you're a member of a college for life. So when you come back, you, for example, uh, my college is 150 years old and were it not for COVID, there'd have been a massive ball in their beautiful um, dining room, which you might've seen on Harry Potter. Uh, it, it actually does look that incredible. And it'd have been a, a, an amazing ball, which you would have been able to attend and meet all sorts of people from all uh, walks of life. So it is an institution in addition to your MBA. Thanks for that. Um, Sam, is there anything you'd like to add on the college experience? Dave has actually articulated um, the whole college experience pretty well. Um, just to add the fact that your admission to the University of Oxford is also tied to your college. So whilst you're a student in Oxford, you are also, you also um, um, are a member you're a part of a particular college. And then several colleges are known for certain things. They, are, they have certain identities. Um, these colleges also make certain investments into several infrastructure, like um, sports facilities. Some are known for rowing. Some are known for the prestigious dining halls that, that we've seen in Harry Potter. I know that was um, a reason why a couple of people wanted to go into certain colleges as well. So yes, um, being a part of the college also exposes you to other people that are part of the larger Oxford community. And then if you would be on the MBA program, um, the college that typically admits the most MBAs is Green Templeton, which is the college that I'm in. Um, you have about 60 to 70 MBAs. Well, some other colleges have uh, about two, three, up to 10 MBAs. But the focus or the, the, the kind of students that you have in Green Templeton are those that are focused on medical sciences, social sciences, and also the MBA. Perfect, thank you. So we're coming close to the end of our time. So I'll give the last question to Lily before um, putting you all through a rapid fire round. Lily, um, how does the MBA very quickly support your career goals? Um, okay, very quickly. Um, so they support uh, before you start the MBA um, with regards to the career services, with regards to Wall Street Prep, which is for anyone who does not have any finance background to support them with some of the core um, modules that we have. Um, even during the, the MBA, you have co-curriculars that um, are a networking opportunity and also an opportunity to technical to build your technical skills like a finance lab impact lab and of course um, also in the summer you can take either an internship you can take on a consulting project or you can take on electives um, all of these are there to make sure that you are all set for post-mba perfect 
Um, so to all our panelists, um, and I'll have you in the same order that you introduced yourselves in, um, 10 seconds, what is the one piece of advice that you would give um, a candidate, someone who's applying to, to Oxford? David, your 10 seconds, go. Do it yesterday. Don't put it off. Get <laughs> Excellent. It done. Lily. Again, just do it. Apply. Go <laughs> ahead. Ink. You can't say just apply anymore. Go. <laughs> Have a strong narrative. Oh, I love that. I love that. Side hill. It's worth it. Just apply. Um, I'll, I'll permit it, Sam. <laughs> you embrace yourself. I love that. Um, Mumbai. You have what it takes. Ooh, love that. Um, Zama. Um, it's life changing, and uh, I strongly recommend it. It really is. And Tammy? If you see yourself in any of these students here today, I highly encourage you to apply because they're all here for a reason and you can definitely be part of this. Thanks, Tammy. And my tagline is you belong in Oxford. Um, so um, Zam and I um, will close off, but we just want to thank you so much for joining our webinar and joining the session. Um, Zama, would you like to say anything in closing? Yeah, thank you so much to our panelists. Thank you to everyone that joined. We really appreciate the information that came from the session. To be receiving all your applications soon. Absolutely. Thank you all. And can I say a very quick thank you to Cheetah and Zama for putting this, this panel together and curating all this content um, you know, through all the questions. And I know we didn't have a chance to answer all your questions, which we will do through uh, separately through the admission team. But I want to say a huge thank you to the panelists for joining us um, and definitely to all of the attendees that have joined this session as well. I hope you found it insightful and I hope that we receive your application soon. So thank you all for joining us. And thank you again, Cheetah and Zama for this. It was really great to be a part of it. Thank you. Bye.